My husband Alex, 32 male, and I, 29 female, have been married for three years together for five. He has a longtime best friend, Jack, 35 male, that has been in his life since before my husband and I met. I like him well enough. The two of them have always been close and spent such a large amount of time together that, at one point, I was almost starting to suspect that my husband was lying about his whereabouts and was actually with another woman. I would randomly ask him to FaceTime or send me a photo as proof that he was where he said he was, and he would always comply. Jack has been talking about building his dream home for a few years now. The guy is pretty well off and has roped my husband into his planning process, saying, Alex will be over constantly anyway, so he should have some say in things. This has been a passion project so many years in the making that I never thought would actually come to fruition. Still, Jack and my husband came to me about a month ago with requests for Jack to stay at our place while his previous house sold, and he worked on apartment hunting to tide him over until the build was complete. So, I agreed to let him stay for no longer than a month. The official date he was supposed to leave was July the 30th. His house has sold and he's toured a few apartments, but from what I can tell he hasn't made a move to rent anything. I continually asked my husband for an update leading up to July the 30th and wasn't provided with much. So last night I told Jack he had until the end of this week to figure something out as he's already overstayed his welcome. Both he and my husband immediately lashed out saying I was a terrible host and that he needed more time than that to sort out an apartment. I said I'd already given him a month. My husband currently isn't speaking to me. Am I the idiot for putting my foot down? He's well off and yet has to stay with you while he builds his dream home? Yeah, well-off people can be cheapskates. Not the idiot. You open your door for a discussion about Jack staying longer when you asked your husband about his plans in the days leading up to the 30th, and he chose to be evasive. But why are you concerned about this fight when there's the bigger problem of needing to prove your husband isn't having an affair? Not having trust between you to the point that you all exchange photos of proof is a big problem. Oh, honey, your husband is having at least an emotional affair. He may very well be having a physical one as well. It sounds like this situation shows you that you need to figure out what's happening between them. Don't turn a blind eye any longer. You deserve to be your husband's number one. But it sounds like your husband already has a number one. So I suspect when the friend goes, the husband may follow. Sorry, OP. Someone hold my Dr. Pepper while I jump into this pool of conclusions over here. Your husband and Jack are having an affair. Please update if hack that's my relationship nickname for husband and Jack, starts referring to the dream house they're building together as our house, or if they come to you with a convoluted story about how they did find an apartment, but it's for women only and so maybe you could stay there for a while. Something is definitely up, OP. I recommend paying close attention the next few days, and I suggest you get a nanny cam if possible when you aren't around. I've read three paragraphs about a snippet of your marriage, and I'm second-guessing things. There's probably more. It genuinely sounds like your husband is just using your home as a crash pad until his boyfriend's house is ready, and then he will bounce. My wife inherited her parents' house when they moved. When they first bought the land and built the house, the people already living behind them had made a riding trail for their dirt bikes. The backyard is a little less than one acre, and their trail comes into the yard about 75 feet and goes across the yard. Her parents had no issue with this and let the kids keep riding through. So now the whole family has dirt bikes and rides through. When we moved, my wife told them it was okay to keep doing this. The issue began when I started working from home. It was a one and a half hour drive to my office. My wife didn't like me driving that long and by the time I got home in the evenings, it was late and I wouldn't get all my share of household work done between eating, showering and spending time with her. So I'd put it off until my days off. That caused a lot of fights between us, so the solution we came up with was I took a pay cut and worked from home since there were no career opportunities closer for me. You can hear them clearly in the house when they ride their dirt bikes. It caused me a lot of issues during business calls and conferences. I've closed all the doors and windows. There's no room I can use for my office. I've tried talking to my wife about it several times and my wife has been home a few times when I've had to push a meeting back by a couple of hours drive to my office to handle business, then go home. My wife refused to tell them they couldn't use the back end of our yard anymore because they'd been doing it for so long. So I went and talked to the neighbor about it. I told them what was going on and asked them to please call to see if I had any meetings or call scheduled before they started riding. That worked for about a week until they talked to my wife about it and she apparently told them they didn't have to do that. So once again, it's noise during the daytime when I'm trying to work. I felt like I'd exhausted all my options in finding a better solution to this, so I filed a police report over the neighbor's trespassing to get it to stop. 
They have stopped, but now my wife is livid with me for being a bad neighbor and going over her head over a silly matter. Am I the idiot? Edit, she put me on the deed and is on the deed to the house I owned before we married, so she is not the sole owner. You are the idiot 100% for filing a complaint against someone doing something they were permitted to do. Figure your crap out with your wife and leave your neighbors out of it until you've agreed on their use of the backyard. Not the idiot. I think filing the complaint was perhaps a little overboard, but it's definitely not an idiot move because the neighbors and wife are much, much bigger idiots here. Your wife cares more about neighbors doing a recreational activity than her husband's actual employment. She obviously sucks the most. And the neighbors know they're interfering with your job to ride their bikes. It's not like you even said never again, just ask first. Honestly, I would have serious issues with my spouse over this. Siding with your neighbors over you in this when their want is so obviously less important than your need is a huge, major red flag. Agree, they just went with the answer they wanted to hear. Even though OP's wife said they didn't have to call, they knew OP asked them to do so. They knew OP was mad about it. So what did they assume the next steps were? OP just gives up? OP comes over and tells them again. Do they just ignore him again? They knew exactly what they were doing. They were banking on OP being a much nicer guy than them. They gambled and lost. That's what I was thinking. They went over his head because they didn't like his decision and ran to the doormat wife, knowing she would feel guilty because they've always done it and let them do whatever they wanted and keep disrespecting the needs of OP. It's disgusting behavior. Everyone's the idiot here. What a weird setup you have. Your wife wants you to work from home, but then allows the neighbors to make it impossible to work from home. Why is your wife so mad that the neighbors don't ride their bikes on your property? I don't know why your wife isn't supportive. You and your wife have some serious issues. I'm currently pregnant with my first child. My fiance and I collectively decided to hold off telling people for at least three months for the following reasons. I didn't want to jump the gun just in case it didn't work out. My sister was in mid-pregnancy with her first after struggling with conceiving for seven years, and we didn't want to steal the thunder. So the baby was born and all was well. My fiancé and I decided to hold off another month so all attention could be on my sister and nephew. We announced it to his friends and family in the meantime, and everyone was super thrilled. A few days ago, I told my parents and they were over the moon. I sent out a nice email with a little e-card and some sonogram pictures to the family members, that are spread out and that I don't see regularly and can't tell in person, my sister included, as she lives in a different state than I do. We got a lot of congratulations and excitement from almost everyone except my sister and her husband. She called in tears, tearing into me for planning this and stealing attention from her son that took her so long to have. I told her this wasn't planned, it just happened. That made things worse as I am significantly younger than her and then it turned into her ranting at me about how nice it must be to be able to get pregnant when she had to fight to get pregnant, struggle and, her words, actually work to have a family. Her husband was in the background and backing her up. I told her we had even taken an extra month to wait to tell people specifically so she and my nephew could have undivided celebration and attention. Then I ended the call. My fiancé and his family are on our side. My family is a little too OMG new baby to gauge properly but my sister and her husband think I'm an idiot. Am I here? Not the idiot. Drama queen detected. Your sister may not be in a clear state of mind due to hormones, exhaustion, and potentially even postpartum depression. Don't take it too personally and let her have time to sit with it for a few days before trying to talk again. You've done nothing wrong and she doesn't get to decide when someone else can get pregnant or under what circumstances. It was considerate of you to wait as long as you did. Infertility struggles cause trauma. It's a little harsh to jump to drama queen immediately. This sounds more like a projection of her struggles and resentment for her own perceived failure to conceive being pushed onto OP rather than her being a drama queen. You waited three months while your sister was still pregnant and then one month after the kid. Did she expect you to wait until you'd had your kid? And then what, just say it was adopted? She's just mad because OP got a kid the way she wishes she had. It's jealousy. I can't get people wanting attention like they're in some sort of real-life competition or something. Anyhow, maybe it's just me. Also, postpartum depression is no excuse to act crappy. Wish you a healthy pregnancy. Ignore toxic people. They're not worthy of your attention. 
My 43 female son, Jay, 19, is staying home from college. I know my son goes to parties and drinks like someone his age, so every time he goes out, I ask him not to overdo it and not to drive if he drinks. He usually does what I ask. Saturday, there was a graduation party at a college in my town, and he got an invite to the party. Since I knew he was going to drink, I confiscated his keys, and he took the Uber to the party, always giving him the same warning not to overdo it. Around 6am, I didn't pay attention to the time because it's very common for him to sleep unannounced at friends' houses. Then, I got a call saying that Jay was hospitalized, and I went into despair running to the hospital by car. When I arrived, they informed me that he had an alcoholic coma, and luckily there was no sequel. I preferred not to scold him, but I admit I was frustrated and disappointed by his inconsequentiality. So, after he was discharged from the hospital, I asked him if he could walk, he said yes, and asked the doctor if there was any problem with him walking. He said he just had to go a little slow. We left the hospital and I told him he would have to walk home, two kilometers away, because if he was old enough to go into an alcoholic coma, he could get home by himself. I left him there, it wasn't dark, but I could hear him complaining and saying it was unfair. He arrived 40 minutes later complaining to the walls about how cruel I was in making him walk after he was in the hospital and that he couldn't ask for an Uber because he'd lost his cell phone, he was with his friend. My husband, not his father, the father agrees with me, said that I was pretty hard on him and that maybe it wasn't the best way to deal with it. Am I the idiot? My son is fully capable of walking two kilometers. He has already walked six kilometers to kiss a girl. You are the idiot. I totally understand your frustration, but not the appropriate time to respond with that punishment. Do you think that that will really deter him from repeating excessive drinking? Maybe have an adult conversation and express your concerns and consequences next time he gets out of hand. The possibilities of injury walking home after hospitalization are there. Act like a parent and parent. Except that child is a 19-year-old adult. I wouldn't have made my 19-year-old walk home. They would be in the car with me. My boys would rather walk home than be in the car with me. The next day is a good time for that adult conversation. There's time for making a point, but not when someone is recovering from one mistake. I doubt the doctor would have thought you meant to walk home. Plus, imagine if he passed out on the way and ended up hurt more. That punishment is too much. He was just discharged from the hospital and was told to take it slow. What part of you thought it was responsible for making your child walk two kilometers on his own after just coming out of a bloody coma? Holy heck, you are the idiot. My son is fully capable of walking two kilometers. He's already walked six to kiss a girl. I threw up a little when I read this. Why does it sound like sheer jealousy? And you've been holding on to that nugget of information for years until you could throw it back in his face? Maybe OP is why the kid doesn't know how to have a healthier relationship with drinks if that's the level of parental care he experiences. Excuse me? OP is jealous? What? I don't think walking will kill him after poisoning. Some fresh air sounds good. Also, it's not that far. He's a big boy. Actions have consequences. This is an annoying consequence, but I don't think a dangerous or unreasonable one. Last week, delivery men were at my house to deliver a long-awaited sofa purchase. Two men came into my house and seemed friendly enough. I showed them what they needed to do, remove a sectional and unpack a sofa and an oversized chair into my living room. While they were at the truck and coming back into my house, a man hollered, Mom, do you want your cat to come in? I yelled, I don't have a cat. I'm also allergic to them and was leaving town in a few hours. They indicated that the cat had gone upstairs, that it was a tabby cat, and that it just ran in. I heard it meow several times. During the 30 minutes that the men were in my house, I heard the meowing but couldn't find it anywhere. I was running all over the house, sweating and frantic. At one point, the workers helped me look for the cat, but it was nowhere to be found. Then, as the men were leaving and I was signing paperwork, the two men finally fessed up that they were the ones making the cat noises. There was no cat at all. I became distressed, but they laughed after telling me that they also played this joke on other women. They thought they were hilarious, a modern-day Laurel and Hardy. When my husband heard the story, he insisted on calling the store and talking to the owner. Am I the idiot for allowing my husband to complain about the workers and potentially getting them fired? Not the idiot. Please follow up and get them in trouble at work. This is grossly unprofessional, and after seeing how frantic you were about it, they should have realized they went too far. I'm worried this could escalate with bigger and bigger pranks until someone gets hurt.
You paid them for a service, not a day of stress. Exactly, she literally spent half an hour frantically searching for a fake cat. This was not funny, wasted her time and stressed her out. That is a very bizarre prank. Makes me uncomfortable. Do your job and get out of the house. So weird. Totally unprofessional and immature. Are you sure these guys didn't have a reason to distract you for 30 minutes? Why would they want you running around looking for a cat? Were they casing the place? Looking for things to come back and steal? Very suspicious, as it's not even remotely a funny joke. All the above. Unprofessional, immature, suspicious, risk of having cameras planted and potential burglars. Cat burglars. What caught my attention was, they played this joke on other women as well. It sounds like they have a specific type of target. It's not a prank, it was a power play. I highly doubt they would do this to a male. They seem to get off on harassing women while doing their job. Not only should you have filed a complaint, but they should be fired and get a one-star review on everything for this.